if, you, if you're suffocating, how are you going to help anybody else out if you don't help yourself out first? So it's really not a selfish thing whatsoever. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't take care of myself. I've got to take care of my family and my career. I, I don't have time to do all that stuff. I'll go to the gym and that's enough. Well, I'm going to share with you a list of examples from my own life of 20 of the things that I do on a very regular basis for my own self-care. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevation Recovery Podcast, your hub for addiction recovery strategies, hosted by Chris Scott and Matt Finch. Welcome to the show. This is Matt Finch coming at you with episode 247 of Elevation Recovery. And in this episode, you're going to learn all about one of my favorite topics, self-care optimization for addiction recovery. And really, self-care is for everybody. You certainly don't need to be you know, trying to overcome a substance use disorder or an early recovery or even beyond to benefit from self-care, particularly here in America and other countries where it's you know fast-paced, where people work a lot. It can be really easy to get burned out stressed out, health can decline. And so self-care is a way for us to really put the attention on ourself. It's so it's just so simple taking care of ourselves. But the funny thing is, well it's not funny, it's actually kind of sad. Uh, a lot of people will actually take better care of their pets than they do of themselves. This used to be me. I remember, you know, when I first got uh, my bird Papaya who's asleep right now unfortunately. I'm missing her being on my shoulder. But when I first got her, it was at a phase of my life, probably five years after a drug and alcohol addiction, and I had really stopped taking care of myself. I just, for whatever reason, I was in a rut, and I would take such good care of that little birdie, but I wouldn't even give myself nearly that type of love and attention, self-compassion, and self-care. So it's really important, and when you're on a, a flight, what do they teach you to do if something happens? If they, you start uh, going down on the airplane, they teach you to put the mask on, the air mask on yourself first. Why? Well, if, you, if you're uh, suffocating, how are you going to help anybody else out if you don't help yourself out first in that regards? So it's really not a selfish thing whatsoever. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't take care of myself. I've got to take care of my family and my career. I, I don't have time to do all that stuff. I'll go to the gym. And that's enough. Well, I'm going to share with you a list of examples from my own life of 20 of the things that I do on a very regular basis for my own self-care. And I could have written probably 40 or 45 things that I do regularly. I'm huge into self-care. I write it up. I write my self-care stuff into my whiteboard and I journal about it. And, you know, it's, and that's one of the self-care uh, tips on here. So this, this example list of 20 things that I do for self-care is not to say that that's what you should do or that anyone should do. I just wanted to give examples so you get a whole bunch of ideas, you know, 20 ideas on what you could possibly do. And from these ideas, you'll probably hear many of them that you've done in the past or maybe that you're currently doing or that sound very interesting to you, that resonate. And so from that, I'm going to give you an optional assignment if you want to do this. That's really how to take these podcasts the next step. You know, on podcasts where we're doing lists like this, you know, taking notes or jotting down ideas to research something, to try something out, you know, that is really the way to capitalize on and benefit from this information. All right, so I'm going on too long in the intro. I tend to do that, but let's get right into this list. And this list is in no particular order. So for number one, I have my Bluetooth sleep mask. A couple of years ago, I went on Amazon and for like $23 or maybe $25, I found this sleep mask that has embedded in it some earbuds. The sound quality is not like epic, like my Sony headphones, but it's good enough. And sometimes I sleep with this, but what I do much more often is I will either meditate or I'll just lay down and relax. In fact, that's what I use it for the most. Every single day, typically, I'll use them at least once or twice. Maybe it's for 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll do it for an hour or longer. And so what I'll do is I'll put the sleep mask on, 
Uh, sometimes I put it all the way over my eyes and so it blacks out everything. And then I put on different various YouTube channels uh, and I'll name off a couple of my favorite ones. Number one is Sleep Tube. This YouTube channel is by a guy named Zach and he's got the most amazing videos where he has like binaural beats, so brainwave entrainment, where you can actually uh, train your brain through these binaural beats to relax down from the, the daily grind beta waves where you're, you know, focusing a lot and go, 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 go. Well, I use these brainwave entrainment devices or these tools, these sound technologies to help to lower those brain waves down to alpha waves, sometimes down to theta waves, sometimes even down to delta waves, which is like really, really getting more and more relaxed. What it does for me is it shuts my overactive brain off. And it helps just calm those thoughts down. And there's also music in the background. And sometimes there's uh, nature sounds like I love rain. I will just, there's this one track uh, by this guy, Zach, on the Sleep Tube channel, where it puts your brain into alpha waves. And it's just the sound of rain. And it's got really beautiful, peaceful music and other sound effects, too. It's just so relaxing. Another one of my favorite channels is called Soothing Relaxation. This guy is a composer. I forget his name, but he's done so many videos over the years. I believe he has more than 8 million subscribers. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll just put on my Bluetooth sleep mask. I have a back pillow, and so sometimes I'll sit up and listen to it. But usually what I do is I'll lay down on either my bed or on the couch in the living room. And I'll put the sleep mask on, blocks all the uh, light out, so it's like calm, it's all darkness. And then in these earbuds, I just get this beautiful, relaxing music or sounds of nature a lot of the time with these binaural beats. What that does is that chills me out. It gives you music therapy, sound therapy, potentially binaural beat, brainwave entrainment therapy. Uh, the Sleep Tube channel also, some of his tracks have 8D audio and isochronic tones. I think that's what they're called. So these types of sound therapy, sound vibration therapy, white noise therapy, with also blacking out. So it's like you get this darkness. I'll use it to meditate, like I said. I'll use it to take naps sometimes. And that's one of the other ones on here. I guess I won't rush into that. And sometimes I'll use it for sleep as well or at least at the beginning when I'm falling to sleep. And then when I wake up, I don't do it. Number two on my regular self-care list is reading with an amber light. So Chris Scott turned me on to this. I remember him in a podcast episode a while back now, probably several months, maybe even six months or longer ago. He told me that before bed, he has this cheap, you know, inexpensive clip-on amber light. So that means that there's no blue light. And he reads before bed. I tell you what, I got one of those for maybe $14. And since I got that thing, I have been reading way more. I just love it. I love it. I love it. So I'll turn off all the lights in the home and just have candle lights or maybe like a lamp, a dimmer lamp on a real low setting. And then I'll sit down on the couch or at the foot of my bed. And I'll just get real comfortable. Sometimes I'll listen to binaural beats with real low volume. Sometimes I do it just totally quiet and the, the light just clips right onto the book and you can really, really adjust it exactly how you want. It has three different settings and that way you're not getting any blue light. So typically uh, I like to do this before bed, just like Chris told me about. I also do it in the morning sometimes, every once in a while in the afternoon, but typically it's after my work day is done, after dinner is eaten, after I've cleaned up and put everything away, and I'm done with everything. That is typically when I'll get out the amber light, the book clamp, and I'll start reading. And that's just so relaxing. Reading helps me with many things. Number one, I get to learn things. Number two, I get to transport my awareness and my, and my consciousness into this material. So it kind of may, helps me to forget about, puts me in the present moment. And it helps me forget about all the other things like, oh, I have to clean this or, oh, I have this bill due coming up or, oh, I, I have a huge day tomorrow. You know, with people like myself that uh, have very active minds, it can be important and very beneficial to do things in our self-care plan 
that help to turn our thoughts down. So when I'm reading someone else's, I'm reading their words. So it's like my thoughts stop and I just start reading the words in front of me. So it turns my brain off in one part, but it turns my brain on in another part. And I love that. I typically read nonfiction, but in the past I have read fiction books and I've read such good fiction books and you can really get absorbed into these fiction stories. A lot of the books I read, like I said, are nonfiction, but a lot of these books also have stories, anecdotes, metaphors in there. Just really, I love reading. Love, love, love it. Number three on my self-care list is nature walks. In fact, a few hours ago, I went up to uh, South Torrey Pines State Beach. I'm lucky that we have one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been to. And I used to live in Hawaii. I used to live on Oahu. And they have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world there. In fact, my favorite beach in Hawaii is called Kailua Beach. That has been rated in the top 10 most beautiful beaches on the planet Earth. And, you know, South Torrey Pines is not as beautiful as Kailua Beach. But it, out of all the beaches I've been to in all of California, that's probably my favorite one. I can't think of another one that I like better than that. And I don't go there at all in the summer because it's so busy. There's no parking. There's thousands of people typically because it's such a long beach. But this time of year, I went there around 1 p.m., only till 2 p.m. I was just there for an hour. But there was tons of parking. There was hardly anyone there. It was 70 degrees. It was a blue sky. And I went barefoot. And I didn't even have any headphones or anything. It was just listen to the sounds of the ocean, the wind, had the feeling of my bare feet in the sand. There's a lot of rocks there too, little pebbles. That feels really good too. You get kind of this uh, self acupressure. On the bottom of the feet, I think we have like thousands of nerve endings. If not thousands, there's a lot of nerve endings. And so it just feels really good walking barefoot in all those surfaces. Plus, I got sunlight therapy and the fresh air that the smell and the feeling of that ocean air with the wind that was coming on shore. You can smell the salt water in the air. You can feel the mist of the water. Just everything about it just rejuvenates my soul. And now that it's this time of year, it's, you know, coming up to mid-November and there's hardly anyone there on weekdays, at least on the weekends, I'm sure it's still busy. I'm going to get back into the habit of going there a few times a week because just going there for a one hour walk, even two times a week, that for me is a game changer for my overall health when I put that in my self-care plan. Number four is kind of a funny one. It's taking baths. And I used to like make fun of my dad who would take baths all the time when I was growing up. I'm like, why don't you just take a shower? It's so much quicker and easier and you, you actually get clean. And so what's funny is it took me till the age of probably uh, 41 years of age before I fell in love with baths. And I don't just take a bath. I have this certain mixture that I get at the health food store about a mile away. I think the brand is, it's called In Essence. Yeah, In Essence. CBD botanically infused Epsom salt baths. So this stuff's really expensive. It's like $25 and one bag only lasts me about two or three baths. So I only use it a couple times a week, if that. But on the times where I don't use that, I'll just put some regular Epsom salt in there or some ancient minerals bath flakes, or I'll just put, oh, they're not behind me. I put them over there. I'll put uh, some essential oils in there. Like I have some organic essential lavender oil. Sometimes I'll put my organic essential peppermint oil and other types of oils. But this, in essence, CBD botanically infused bath salt mix has full spectrum CBD crystals, which is an extract. It has, the one I like has eucalyptus essential oils in it. And it has so many other really calming herbs in it. And it has Epsom salt. I think it might have dead sea salt in there too. So I love taking baths. Uh, it's just so relaxing, helps to just chill your body out. I am addicted to it. Now, I don't really care for a regular bath. If there's not at least essential oils in it or at least some Epsom salt, and you know, my preferred one is this CBD botanical Epsom salt, but if it's just a regular hot bath, I'm not too crazy about it. I really like the calming magnesium, CBD, and herbs in there. 
but that's one of my self-care habits is regular baths. It's kind of funny. Number five on my self-care list is comedy. So for many, 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 many years after I came off drugs and alcohol, I was serious. You know, I used to be the class clown out of my circle of friends, regardless of the friend group I had at the time. I was typically one of the people that was making everybody laugh. I even remember doing this as early as elementary school. Uh, When I went to college, I was the class clown. You know, I've loved to make people laugh. I've loved to laugh. When I came off drugs and alcohol, I became really serious. So serious, in fact, that I was tense a lot of the time, stressed out a lot of the time. You know, I, I really went hardcore into like getting things done and building a business and being responsible. But I didn't balance that out with letting loose and being silly and being goofy and playing around, I lost that playfulness. I lost my sense of humor. And that's like, that that led to declining mental health. That led to worsening chronic pain symptoms and lots of tension up in my trapezoids. So the way I do comedy is, you know, sometimes I'll make people laugh, but I don't seem to be as funny as I was back in the day for whatever reason. But I'll watch prank videos on YouTube. One of the funny channels I like, it's kind of disgusting, but I think it's hilarious. It's called Gilstrap TV. This guy does these fart pranks where he's got this little uh, fart machine that just makes the nastiest wet fart pranks. If I'm grossing you out, sorry, I'm going to be done with this soon. Uh, but he go, he's the best fart pranker on all of YouTube. And his his some of his videos have like millions of views. It makes me crack up. It just makes me laugh. So he actually comes to uh, Pacific Beach, which is just up north, maybe two miles up the coast from here. And so not only is it hilarious, uh, especially a lot of the younger girls, they'll just they'll be like, oh, my gosh, and they'll start laughing. But it's kind of cool because I know all the areas when he has those videos up there as well. Sometimes for comedy, I'll watch stand up comedy. Sometimes I watch whole routines. Uh, But much more typically, I'll just go on YouTube and search for dry bar comedy. And they've got lots of short, you know, clips, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Dry bar, I think it's in Utah and it's an alcohol free comedy club and some of the most hilarious. It's like clean comedy. So it's clean comedy. I I watch raunchy comedy sometimes, too. But I really like clean comedy, especially Jim Gaffigan the Hot Pockets guy. If you've never seen Jim Gaffigan, uh, Jim Gaffigan stand-up YouTube comedy, uh, go on YouTube and search for Jim Gaffigan Hot Pockets. First time I ever watched that, I was crying laughing, crying laughing for the whole entire duration. It was like 10 minutes long, I think. And I hadn't laughed that hard in a long, long time. Number six on my self-care list is playing a nylon classical acoustic guitar. So my mom has this really nice guitar that she's had, I think, for 40 years. It's a 40-year-old classical guitar. It's got a beautiful tone. I love the feeling of the nylon strings, and I finger pick with it, as you're supposed to with those type cigars, c- cigars, those guitars typically. And usually I'll play guitar at night. So sometimes before I read, I'll play guitar. I don't play guitar that much, maybe total one hour per week altogether, Some some weeks, two hours, but it's just a great way for me to kind of relax at nighttime. Very cathartic, really fun. I used to be uh, a musician that played in bands for many years throughout my 20s and even into my early 30s, playing electric lead guitar in bands. I played bass in a couple of bands, and I used to play a keyboard too. So that's something that I just love doing, playing the acoustic, and I have it out in the living room, visible So I actually see it on a daily basis because I remember in the past, if I put my guitars away in a closet, I would just never play them. So for me, I I like to put things around the house where I can see them if they're things that I want to make sure I'm doing on a regular basis. Number eight on my self-care list is spending time with animals. Of course, if you're a regular watcher or listener, you know that I have a bird named Papaya who is a female. I remember some people... Uh, commenting on a recent YouTube video saying, calling papaya he. Papaya is a female. In fact, you can't even figure out uh, the sex of these birds unless you get a DNA test. 
I knew she was a female, you know, for the first probably year I had her, I just knew I didn't even need to get a DNA test. I could tell she was female. But then when I took her to the vet and paid for the DNA test, it was probably like $25. They, you know, affirmed, yes, she's a female. So I got a green cheek conure type of parrot named Papaya, and she's my little female bird. Real sweet. I spend time with her all day, every day. We are like just so close together. But I love all the animals around. There's a, a few cats that my neighbor has. And the other day I was having a just real hard day. Just for whatever reason, I was just wasn't depressed or wasn't down or anything, but I was low energy, didn't sleep good the night before, feeling slightly uh, melancholy, just a little bit melancholy. And I saw the cat and I went right up to it, got down on my knees and started to pet it. And it was just purring and rubbing its head into me. And, and uh, then it, when I stood back up and was trying to leave, it didn't want me to. The cat was like going through my legs and rubbing its head up against my knees. And that just made me feel so good. My sister has a dog uh, named Harper, who's a male dog. And he is a half and half mix between a pit bull and a pug. I guess uh, how he was created was the father was a pug. And I guess it got up on a stepladder and impregnated the female, which was a pit bull. I would pay good money. No, I'm just kidding. I can only visualize what that looked like. But anyways, uh, some you know you see I have this bald head here. So my head's bald. And whenever I see Harper, I'll put my bald head right up next to him. And he will lick my head all over. It's kind of gross, but it's really, really fun. Like it just, he'll just lick my bald head. People look at it, go, oh, I can't believe you're letting him do that. I'm just an animal lover. I love animals so much. I get along with animals so much. Today on my nature walk at Torrey Pines Beach, there was lots of seagulls. And I just love birds. I think since I got papaya, uh, my love for her has generalized to all birds. So now when I see birds, it just makes me think of her. And so I saw this seagull and it was on the beach looking at the ocean just like I was doing. And I walked up closer and closer to it, really calm. And I was just trying to make my energy as loving and relaxed as possible because I just wanted to be there with the birds, you know, and, and stare at the ocean. And so probably 10 minutes long, I'm just maybe not that long, maybe seven or eight minutes. I'm just standing, you know, maybe 10 feet away from this seagull and it's kind of checking me out. I'm checking it out. And I'm like kind of telepathically sending it messages of, hey, little, little birdie, looking at the ocean like me, you sure have a, a wonderful place that you live here, huh? And so I just love animals, spending time with animals. I think one of the most ideal uh, addiction recovery inpatient places would be out on like a farm somewhere, somewhere out in nature or at the beach somewhere, like a just somewhere where there's no businesses, where there's no residential area. You're totally submerged in nature and there's horses and dogs and birds and chickens and, you know, all sorts of different animals, cows, just you name it. The more animals, the better, the more nature and the more animals, the better and more sunlight, the better. Number nine on my self-care list is naps. We kind of already talked about that. Uh, back in the past, I would, I hated taking naps. I hated getting tired. During the workday, I would just pound caffeine. I would drink coffee. I would drink energy drinks. I didn't want to get tired at all. And so I would fight it with caffeine so I could keep going. Well, that actually turned out to reduce my productivity, to reduce my mental health and physical health. So now when I get tired, I'll take a nap. And a lot of times I won't even fall asleep. Like I said earlier, I'll just put on the Bluetooth sleep mask. I'll lay back. And I'll just rest and listen to music real quiet, close my eyes. You know, sometimes it's only for 10 minutes. Sometimes it's like an hour and a half nap and lots of different variations uh, within those. But it's kind of my way of just taking a little break. You know, back in the day, I didn't like to take breaks at all. I like to power through everything. And if I wasn't being super productive throughout the whole day, I'd start to feel like this unconscious or even conscious guilt. Now I'm like viewing life as the long game. You know, I'm 42. 
you know, hopefully I'll live until my 80s, 90s, who knows how long. I want to live a full, healthy, rich life. So now I'm realizing that it's a long game. There is no need to rush through the day. So I try to enjoy the day. I relax when I need to. I lay down when I need to. I fall asleep in the middle of the day when I need to. Now, of course, I work from home, so I know not everybody has that luxury. A lot of times, you know, I have appointments after appointments, so I can't always do that. But it's oftentimes with the way my flexible schedule is, I'm able to do it for at least 15 minutes, sometimes even an hour or even up to two hours. I can just lay down. So it's nice to have that uh, luxury. And again, so I know that not everybody wants to do these things, can do these things. So again, this is just examples from my life. Again, not to tell you what you should do, but to give you examples so you can start thinking about where you can optimize your own self-care plan. Number 10 on my self-care list is exercise. I don't need to go deep into that. You know, I'm sure you know that we talk about exercise on here a lot, but I've got a small little uh, really inexpensive home gym here with a few resistance bands, adjustable dumbbells, yoga mat, and a few other things. And I got my gym a few blocks up the street, the YMCA, and I like to walk a lot too, walk at the beach. I have a park really close by that I'll typically walk at at night when I walk there because they have sports going on. Uh, after school. Really close, we have a nature trail. It's super short, but probably 50 yards, maybe 60 yards away from me, there is a nature preserve. It's a really small one, but you can go in there and get submerged in nature. So I'll typically do that one in the daytime. I don't like to go to that one at nighttime ever because there's a bunch of people doing methamphetamines there, sleeping there, and doing who knows what else. So I'm kind of afraid to go there at nighttime. The vibe is way different uh, versus in the afternoon. I'll take like a little uh, work break, you know, 15 minute to sometimes a half hour. And sometimes I'll just go sit on the bench and look at the pond. And there's lots of birds and butterflies and bees, tons of trees and plants, beautiful. And it's there's airplanes that are super loud that go right over. Uh, the preserve. But other than the loud airplanes, everything else is very relaxing. Number 11 on my self-care list is I listen to trance music, progressive trance, uh, vocal trance, and other types of trance. I never got into trance when I was in high school and in my early 20s when it was like this big thing. People would do MDMA and ecstasy cut with all sorts of other stuff or just pure. And they'd go to these raves that played this rave music A lot of it was trance. So I didn't get into it until maybe a few years ago. And I I remember reading a study. It was saying out of all the genres of music, people that listen to trance seem to be the happiest. You know, there was like this subjective reporting of people's mood states and emotions and overall well-being and happiness in life. So I thought that was kind of cool that people that listen to trance rank so high. I listen to trance when I clean the home a lot of the time. Uh, I'll listen to trance often when I'm driving. Uh, Other than those two times, sometimes I'll listen to trance when I'm getting into the shower or when I'm shaving. You know, it's not like I'm listening to trance all day, every day. Probably a a total of maybe two hours of trance music per week. A lot of it's in the car. I find it great driving music. But yeah, that, that music gets me going. My favorite trance channel is Armin Van Buren on YouTube. I think he has over 5 million subscribers now. And every Thursday, he's got this show that's a two-hour show called A State of Trance, A-S-O-T. So if you're into trance, you want to learn some new cool stuff, he's my favorite DJ. Again, that's Armin Van Buren. I also like the channel called Trance for Life. Number 12 for my self-care habits is superfood elixirs. So I love to make drinks with superfoods in them. Right now, for the past maybe three months, I've been drinking something after quitting all caffeine for an entire month. I did a cold turkey, 100% uh, caffeine detox for one month. And since then, I've only had one cup of coffee, uh, zero of those energy drinks. I used to drink Bang and some other types of energy drinks, but I haven't had any energy drinks only one cup of coffee in the past probably three months or so since doing that caffeine detox. 
Now the only caffeine sources that I consume are yerba mate tea and matcha green tea. Much less caffeine than coffee. More out there alkaline versus coffee is acidic. When I drink coffee, that stuff burns me out. It gets me going so jacked up and it makes me so productive. But then there's a crash for me. And it's like, it kind of, it's really rough on my nerves for whatever reason. A lot of people can take coffee. It just seems to jack me up too much and then drop me on my butt. And it's very acidic. It's very dehydrating to me personally. And of course, it, you know, the dose is what makes the poison. If I could just have one cup in the morning, that'd probably be fine. But for, I love coffee so much that before long, I'm drinking coffee because it keeps dropping me on my butt making my blood sugar swing all over the place. So for, so I do not like coffee anymore. And now I don't even miss it whatsoever because I'm making these uh, yerba mate drinks, these matcha drinks. But anyways, the long story short, the, one of the superfood drinks I'm drinking right now has raw milk or I use raw uh, goat milk and I put maca root powder, which is a Peruvian adaptogen that helps with non-caffeinated energy and endocrine optimization. I put organic matcha powder in it, and I put organic cacao powder in it. This organic cacao powder, really rich in polyphenols, which are this powerful antioxidants. It's got some caffeine in it, not a whole lot, but it also has something called theobromine, which is another mood booster. It's kind of like caffeine, but a little bit different. So the cacao powder has theobromine, a little bit of caffeine, the polyphenols, a bunch of other mood boosters, antioxidants. The maca is a huge for energy, and it's one of the most powerful natural antidepressants on the planet. And organic matcha powder has, you know, low amount of caffeine, high amount of L-theanine, which boosts dopamine, serotonin, and GABA, puts your brain into alpha brain waves. And green tea is super rich in something called EGCG, really, really powerful health nutrient helps with weight loss. And beyond this drink that's got maca, again, maca, matcha, cacao powder in the raw milk or the raw goat milk. Sometimes, you know, I can't get to that health food store or they're out of it. So sometimes I'll just use grass-fed milk. Sometimes I'll use coconut milk or almond milk. But usually I like the raw goat milk or the raw cow milk. And yeah, beyond those, I have probably a dozen of other superfoods. Most of them are powders. Some of them are liquids. And I'm always making and trying new superfood elixirs, superfood dense smoothies, and superfood infused protein shakes as well. Number 13 on my self-care list is an early bedtime. I do best personally when I go to bed within a few hours to maybe four hours after dark. So if I go to bed too late the next morning, sometimes after one night going to bed late, I'm fine, but for sure, once I have two nights in a row where I go to bed too late, I'm really, really feeling it. So I've found that my body does best by far when I go to bed, you know, depending on the time of year, fall and winter, in between 9 p.m. and maybe 10.30 p.m., and then in the summer, around 10 p.m. to like 11.30 p.m., somewhere pretty early like that. There's almost no time where I can stay up past 11.30 p.m and still feel my best the next day. Number 14 is journaling. I used to be so into journaling for many, many, many years after I quit drugs and alcohol. In the past year, I got away from journaling for whatever reason, just so many other things. You know how it happens. You get away from doing something, then you forget about it, or you don't think it's important anymore. Well, I just restarted the journaling self-care habit just a few days ago. And since then, I've already written five pages through journaling, and I'm getting so much catharsis out of it, so much self-therapy, so many realizations. It's helping me to process emotions, helping me to kind of organize my thoughts and work through things. Oh, journaling, when you know how to do effective journaling, rather than just kind of write what you did during the day, doing some therapeutic, intentional journaling that has huge gains for the short amount of time it takes to write a journal entry. I absolutely love journaling. Number 15 on my self-care list is entertainment in 
moderation. For most of my life, I was a, I had an excess of entertainment. Entertainment, entertainment. I love to just be entertained, watching movies, watching shows, going to the movies, going to do fun things, going to the amusement park, going bowling, going to play video games, all sorts of entertainment. So nowadays, I'm just not interested uh, much at all in entertainment anymore. The, the types of entertainment I still like are things like comedy, comedy shows, comedy movies, sci-fi movies, sci-fi shows, and YouTube videos that are just make you laugh or they're just kind of interesting things or even the news. But all of this type of content or all of these types of entertainment things, I do them in moderation, you know, a little bit. And I found that for me, that's a good form of self-care. I need to be, you know, just turn my brain off and be entertained by YouTube or be entertained by a show or be entertained by a movie or be entertained by the news, but very, very little amount of all that stuff. Same thing with junk foods. You know, I like some junk foods uh, now and again, but it's just a small part, a little bit of moderation versus in the past, I would eat lots of uh, comfort foods and junk foods and sweets. And I would binge watch lots of movies and shows and entertainment. That was not moderation. That was excess. Number 16 is meditation. And I'm not one of those people that's a diehard meditator. I would really love to be. I'm trying to become one. But I just I just can't sit there for an hour like my parents. They meditate for one hour every single morning without fail, like no matter what, unless they're in the hospital. They'll go on vacation for a week or something, and they'll meditate every morning on vacation. They'll go camping in Mexico or Australia, and they'll still meditate. They'll be sick, like have a cold or something, and they'll still meditate. They just they do not miss those meditations. They they really really are into it. Me, I like to meditate for anywhere from ten minutes to maybe a half hour. There are times when I'll meditate for an hour, even an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minutes are probably some of my longest ones when I get really deep into it. But you know, a lot of the time, uh, my mind goes quiet or a few thoughts come in. And it's not really this like life changing thing, but it's it's fun to be quiet. It's fun to relax. I love the breathing. Part of the reason I do it is because it really helps me to normalize and regulate healthy diaphragmatic breathing, Buddha belly breathing to where you're getting this nice parasympathetic nervous system activation breathing. And sometimes I have these just beautiful kind of mystical experiences but usually it's not like that. Usually it's just kind of, eh, and that's okay. I've realized that, you know, it's, it's a long thing. And I, unless you want to be like my parents and make it a super discipline, you know, a lot of the meditations are probably not going to be these mystical, wonderful things, but I still really like it. And it's great for my self-care. Number 17 is prayer. I pray every single morning. I'm not religious, but I'm highly spiritual. And I also pray every night before bed. And recently, at least the last few months, if not last six months, I also pray several times throughout the day. But without fail, I do it in the morning and I do it before bed. Number 18 is I drink lots of water. I probably drink a gallon of water on most days, sometimes maybe a gallon and a half. Eh, every once in a while, maybe only a half gallon, but I notice it. If I don't get close to about a gallon of water per day, I notice a deficit in energy, in mood, in hydration. So water is a huge self-care tactic. Number 19 on my list is I'll give myself a massage. And the way I do this is when I, and I double it up with when I take a bath. So before I totally submerge into the bathtub, I will just put my feet in and I'll sit up on the, you know, the ledge of the bath and I'll just kind of get my feet wet. Then I'll start to splash the water up in my legs. I'll dip my forearms in. And while that's happening, that's when the bath is filling up and filling up. Then I'll massage my hands. I'll put the water up here and I'll massage my shoulders and I'll massage my chest. I'll massage my calves. I'll massage my feet. Then towards the end, splash more water on me as it's filling, as the bathtub's filling up. Then I'll start to massage my head. And my ears, it feels so, so good. Of course, it feels way better when somebody else gives you a good massage. But a self-massage 
if you know how to do it right, oh, it makes you feel absolutely extraordinary. It's so relaxing. It's such a huge key in my overall self-care plan, these self-massages. I learned this from studying Ayurvedic medicine, where they actually recommend doing a self-oil massage to where you can either do it just on your head, or they often recommend a full body oil massage with something like sesame oil, the many different types of oils. Uh, they recommend, depending on the person's main dosha or main two doshas in Ayurvedic medicine. And finally, number 20 on my self-care list is I make my bed every single morning. I only started doing this maybe two years ago. I, I was 40 years old before I finally got into the habit of making my bed every morning. My mom could never get me to do it. My dad could never get me to do it. Throughout my 20s and all throughout my 30s when I was living on my own, I never made my bed. I would sometimes, but it wasn't first thing in the morning. And it was maybe you know when I was cleaning my room or cleaning the home in general, oh, I'll make my bed too. Now I can't stand it if that bed is not made within the first 45 minutes to hour I'm awake. Making the bed just, uh, I don't know if it's like a miniature OCD thing now or what, but it just feels, it's like an easy win right at the beginning of the day. Making your bed in the morning, it's like this nice win, something that you did. It's very satisfying, gives me a dopamine boost. Then, you know, I got my other morning habits and writing all the stuff on my whiteboard, and now journaling is in there as well. So it's just it gives me this feeling of self-efficacy, feels like I have more agency over my life, and it looks really good when you got a nicely made bed. It just looks way better, and it's not a nasty eyesore the whole day. All right, so that was my list of 20 things in no particular order that I do on a regular basis for my self-care optimization. Now, if you want, go into the comment section below and post some of the things that either that you do for self-care or maybe that you used to do, but you got away from doing it and you're noticing yourself going, ah, I really need to get back to doing that. Or you could post any of the things that I talked about in this episode that you've never tried before that sounded fun, that sounded helpful, that you're going to do, whether it's checking out that trance channel or the sleep tube YouTube channel getting a blue tube sleep mask, giving yourself a self massage or one of the many other things. It'd be kind of cool to get this comment section going so people can put new ideas out there. And so I can learn things too. I'd like to know either what you do for self-care, what you want to start doing for self-care, some of the things that you do in life uh, currently or that you've done in the past that really helped you. I always love to learn. It's one of my favorite things in the world is learning. And maybe if you put something down there that really resonates with me, you can help me out and I'll add that to my self-care plan. So as always, thanks so much for joining me. Again, this is Matt Finch with Elevation Recovery and Fit Recovery. We love you guys so much. Can't wait to see you next time and take care. 